Today I want to talk about tolerancing and kind of my best practices on how to deliver this. So tolerancing is just this kind of an idea. If, if you've never had to deal with this, let me give you kind of the short and sweet. Here is a hole that was designed around an M5 socket fastener, okay? So let me bring over a chart here and you can see what I'm talking about. This is just the idea, well, it's, it's a standards for all of your, you know, um, metric M345 fasteners, et cetera, right? So this is an M5. So if you kind of scroll across here, you'll get all the different dimensions, and then you can basically map it out to that. You could also just have the fastener in your hand, grab some calipers, and you could measure it. Now, here is what the concept is, though. If I have a thing, let's say this D value here is the, the, the five millimeters of the fastener. If I have a five millimeter shaft item thing that I got to put into something and you make the hole exactly the same size as that, so I make a five millimeter hole, it will not fit, which for some people, if you've never done any manufacturing or you've never built anything, that's maybe kind of a weird concept, but it doesn't really fit. You could hammer it in, you might call it an interference fit. Uh, sometimes it's tight enough that they do these things in aerospace called freeze plugs where you'll actually cool off the object as in like you'll put it into liquid nitrogen or something similar to shrink it down uh, a very small amount, just enough to get it in there. You'll hammer the part in and then it'll swell up to fit. And then it's basically, you know, a permanent item. Now, I mean, so you could do that, but that's not what we want to do. With tolerancing, what you're trying to figure out is how much should I oversize the hole or undersize the object going into the hole to get it to fit well. And there's another definition. What is well? What do we mean by well? Well, do we want a kind of like rattly kind of hanging around sort of fit? Do we want it uh, tight, but not so much that we have to hammer it in? You know, wh where do we want to err on this? And so then that's where this comes in. So then if I want to say, you know, increase the size of this hole, I want to increase the size of this. And so it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's five millimeters. From experience, I can tell you that most fasteners that I've actually picked up and measured, they're a little bit under, so you might even be okay with a five millimeter hole. But let's say it was a real tight fit. I want to increase a, a little bit of this, right? So we'll move this out of the way. You could, of course, go back to the sketch that created this hole and just increase it a little bit. You could do that. But here's the thing, and this is the point of the video, the easy way to do this, the, the, the way to make sure that you're thinking correctly and all the things that you do um, are tied together well, um, is, is you don't want to make a change to this. So as you can see here, this is actually associated to a function. And if you've watched some of my other videos, you'll, you know, there's a video back a little bit talking about how to do this. You can go to change parameters. And um, this is a pretty common thing in uh, good CAD programs. Uh, I, I can create all these different user parameters. And this one right here, this five millimeter is associated to hole diameter. I also have five millimeter for hole depth. So, I mean, I guess we can tell that's not the hole depth, but if you wanted to, you could double click on it and it will show you. Okay, so the beginning of this might be something like this. We can set a parameter and you can say, well, okay, I want it to be five, how about 5.1? So we say 5.1, as soon as I hit enter, you'll see that that changes. And then maybe you go ahead and make a prototype and then you check it for fitness and, and you see, okay, well, does it fit? Is it too loose, too, too tight, whatever, right? And then you keep changing and keep changing until you get there, okay? You can do this, this could be okay, but what I wanna show you is maybe a different way to look at this. It, uh, a thing that I've became fond of doing is, if the hole is supposed to be five millimeters, maybe I'm actually getting this hole as a projection from another element. So say maybe out here, um, I had another component called fastener, and I wanna project that hole onto this surface. I want the two to be the same. I don't wanna to have to modify one of these something kind of like this. So here is a fastener, right? And I could have brought, um, imported one in from McMaster car. Yeah, I, but I just wanted to have the 
analog idea of a fastener, and to mention that this is not about tarnishing just for fasteners. This could be any type of puzzle piece. For example, perfect. This ring right here, say there's gonna be a ring that we're gonna insert into this slot, right? The same kind of behavior here. So, um, also, I would not, as I said previously, be doing things like projecting. If you can avoid a projection, try. You know, they're not bad, they're great. We use them all the time. But I wouldn't wanna project this down to here because this is gonna go into there and so it's kinda of cart before the horse stuff. Then what the better thing to do, I would say, might be, because this is kind of a tough thing about this and also making a video on this, to try to you know, say something like, this is the way you should do it, you know, when really it's a way that you do this in certain circumstances, not necessarily all the time because every part is different and the future, the, 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 the you know, the development cycles of this part could be different. This could be a one-op thing that you're making and you're never ever gonna do it again or this could be a new product that's going to have many, many iterations over time and you want to be able to edit it well without the thing blowing up on you, okay? So here we are. So let's say let's say that I have this faster here, and I want to um, kind of build this hole off of that. What I'll do first is get into the fastener itself, and we'll go make some parameters because they're not here for it. So the hole diameter, hole radius, and counter bore, all these same features are going to be associated to this fastener, and in uh, probably more real life, the fastener comes first. You know what fastener probably you're going to use and the hole is going to match that. So you're going to make the values based upon this, this item here that's getting inserted into something and then you'll make that other something and you'll connect it to these same parameters. So we did a little bit backwards, but at any rate, it'll all come out the same. So the hole diameter, the, uh, the counter bore, and the depth, those will all be also associated with this. So go here to the sketch first and this five millimeters we associate it with hole diameter and now it's 510 we're going to go back and change that right that was left over from screw down before get out of here and then we'll change the the um what is that? Oh, we don't care about the depth. That right now, you probably would. You'd probably add that in, but I didn't associate that to a parameter. What I want is the top of the socket here. So we'll edit that. And that is going to be whole, um, well, it's counter bore. I should have called it something a bit different. And we're out of, there we go. Wow, we're all over the place. And then the depth of this. the whole depth. Okay, so now this fastener and the hole that it's going into are both the same. Do you see the convenience of that? You design the one thing and everything that it needs to go together with or inside of, they're all, they're, they're the same parameter. Now, the video is on tolerancing, so you, we don't have the tolerancing in there yet. Right, so what I wanna do is create an add-on to that that doesn't break this link that we just created between the two of them. For many, many, many years in Katia, uh, there is a, 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 an icon called thickness. And here it's offset face. And, and I thought forever that it was a pretty much useless, maybe old antiquated icon that had really no purpose until one day I discovered that instead of you know thickening a face because why do, why do you want to thicken a face why don't you if you want to thicken it why don't you just go back and change the original and and fix it right well i found out that with these these commands here you can do negative values and then that became pretty handy for well like what we're doing today so if i hit offset face and uh, come down into here what i can do is i can pick each one of these faces that i want to uh, make it a little bit bigger and I, I can set it off in a negative value. So let me just show you what it does first. I'll pick this one right here and I'll say I would like to go minus three. Do you see? Minus three millimeters. We're not going to do that. But do you see what it does? It removes the face back that three millimeters and that is very handy for tolerancing. 
So then what we're going to do is we're going to take this feature right here, this face and this face, and we're going to pull them both back a little bit. But what works pretty good about this, this kind of thing I'm doing here today is that the hole down here that the actual fastener threaded part goes through, we might want that to be a little bit tighter than this, maybe right? Just for the hell of it, let's make it be so. So I can show you that we're going to have to have two different values here, okay? So I'll come here, I'll pick the offset face, I'll pick that, and then I'll say minus 0 0.01. You know, maybe a, 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 uh, that, that's, that's pretty small, you know, but you figure it out, you know, uh, maybe a, how about a tenth? How about that? Like a tenth of a millimeter. We'll just pull it back just the tiniest little bit. Then if I hit OK, and I'll go ahead and assemble this again, what I did is I just offset it by 60 just uh, so that we could see the fastener. If I get around here and we zoom in and flatten this thing out, oops, you can see that we do have a little bit of a gap right there. It's hard to tell because the fastener head is green, right? But that's, that's our gap right there. So it's working. We, we got what we want. Now the next thing though is rather than just have that again be a number, we want to change it in parameters. And then this is where you got to think maybe a little bit more. I could call this something like, say we got to come up with a name, right? So I, I could call it say uh, fastener shaft tolerance, you know, something like that. Or maybe what you might want to do is maybe just give them a name like tolerance 01, tolerance 02, and tolerance 03. And these could correlate to maybe a chart somewhere that you keep. I, I, I really hesitate to try to like put this into other documentation somewhere, but, but possibly your uh, company, your whatever that you're doing here, you might have, you might find that you've got a, a very consistent amount of tolerances, say an interference fit, uh, an, an almost interference fit, a really snug fit, a kind of a sort of loose fit, and then a really sloppy wobbly fit. And you got to come up with kind of a name for these. So we could call this, or you could say tall, tight, you know, I don't know, something like that. And then what we're going to do here is say 0 0.05. So that's a pretty good tight tolerance. Um, remember, this is in millimeters, right? So we'll do that, and then while we're here, we'll go ahead and we'll add another one that is tall. We'll just, gosh, go with this, right? Tall, tight, tall, loose. You kind of get the point here. And this one here, I'll say 0.2. Okay. Then you might even have other ones that really wouldn't even fall under the, the, the concept, I guess, of tolerance, but maybe it's just a, um, it's, it's kind of a different type of fit. So say, for example, the head of the fastener up at the top, the counterbore. You know maybe you're going to counterbore that hole by hand. I don't know why the hell you're going to do this, but maybe it's just going to go awry and you know you're going to have problems with it. Or you, for aesthetics, maybe you're going to fill it in with something. Anyways, maybe you want that thing to actually be like three millimeters larger, right? So you could call that something else, and I don't even know if that, like I said, would fall under the, the realm of tolerances. But you do that. You add those all in here, and so then... What I'll do is I'll, I'll hide the fastener for a second, get back in here, and then that right here, the offset face that we did a second ago, we're going to change this to tall, tight, and then we're going to make another, uh, oops, make sure that we're in the base, then we're going to make another offset face. We're going to use this one right here, and it is going to be, oops, Made a mistake. Hold on. Let me keep going with this. Tall, loose, and hit OK. Do you see what just happened? Hold on. Go back here. Everything got tighter, right? You got to make these negative values. So there's that for that one and for that one. Okay. Now, if we bring the fastener back, you can see that it is, you know, you can kind of see, let's, let's see if you can see. There's, there's seems to me like there's a bigger gap there. Then we'll flip this thing around.
and there's the gap right there, okay? So really, that is the whole point of this thing here, is I just wanna show you uh, the offset faces and how you could use this tool right here, and with changing parameters with your parameter section, how you can start to associate things to that so that your fastener or the item going into it is the same size as the hole. They're linked together using the same parameter, but then you create a new parameter to add that little bit of extra. Now, any one of these, the tight tolerance, since it's, it's actually an offset value, it's sort of a, a tangential distance from one side to the other, it doesn't matter really what size the hole or what size of the shape of the feature is, you could use that same one. So if I did decide that I want to put a ring inside of here, but I do want it to be a really tight tolerance, almost have to kind of slightly hammer it in, then I could use the same tight tall that I used for the lower one here for the ring to fit into there, okay? And uh, once you kind of play around with this, I think you'll probably develop your own set of tolerances that are good for you, and then yes, you could probably write them down in some kind of a book or an online fashion that everybody could refer to so they don't have to go through all the testing and prototype prototyping every single time just to get a fit.